All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me, I have the dulcet tones of Tom Henschel. Tom has been <laughs> Tom has been coaching senior corporate leaders for more than 30 years. He's known for his work with disruptive executives and for helping people achieve the look and sound of leaders, which is also the name of his podcast, which has been airing since 2008. Tom Henschel, welcome to The Remarkable Coach, which has not been airing since 2008. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is nice to see you again. Thank you for having me back. Yes, yes. This is, uh, I forgot to mention that, of course. This is a, uh, a standing ovation, a, uh, a comeback, <laughs> if you will. Uh, Tom's second uh, appearance on The Remarkable Coach. His first appearance, I believe, was December of 2021, episode number 41. If you're listening or watching this and you haven't had a chance to uh, listen to that episode, I strongly recommend you go back and listen to some of those nuggets of gold that Tom dropped uh, back then. And then and then here we are. <laughs> here we are. Here we Let's are. Let's do it again. Um, Tom, for those uh, of our listeners who have not had a chance to listen to the first episode, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do in your own words? Sure. Thanks. Uh, I run a company called Essential Communications, and we're an executive development firm. I do primarily executive coaching. Uh, often I'm asked to do, as you said, the look and sound of leadership, executive presence, polish people up. The other thing that I do is I do a lot of teamwork because the, the people that I am coaching often say, hey, will you do my offsite? Mm -hmm. So I also get to do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And um, for my podcast, I talk to a lot of my listeners and mm -hmm. that's great too. Nice. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I love it. I love it. So who are your, who are your typical clients nowadays? Well, that's changed since last we talked. There we go. That's a good place to start then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when you and I talked in December 2021, <laughs> I would have said my target client is corporate executive, vice presidents and above. Fortune 500. That sounds about and, right. Yeah. And for way more than a decade, that was my client. During the pandemic, things shifted. Mm -hmm. And I found, at least with my clients, that the time and resource allocation for executive development really shrank because mm -hmm. people were focused on so many other things. Mm -hmm. And so I just didn't get a lot of new coaching work. Not like anybody fired me, but, you know, I finished my clients and didn't have new ones coming in. Sure. And the listeners to my podcast came really just like, man, they just came pouring in because everybody was wanting so much help. Yeah. So my clientele has shifted more now what I call private coaching uh -huh. and the corporate coaching is, I would say 35 to 40% of my business where it used to be 80%. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So tell, tell me about the, the, the private coaching. What is that? What does that look like? How is that different than the executive coaching? So somebody reaches out to me and says, Hey, you know, can we coach? So we get on a call and that's a free call, you know, where we talk to each other and what do you want out of coaching? Blah, blah, blah. If sure. we both want to go forward, it's really simple. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be completely straight with you, which is I charge people currently 1200 us dollars for four one hour sessions. Okay. That's it. Yeah. And they can use them whenever they want. They can use them in a week. They can use them over the course of six years. I don't care. Uh, they can set their own goals. I don't talk to their boss. We don't do assessments. It's just four hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's it. And people, I have people mm -hmm. who like, for example, I have a leader at, uh, at Amazon. Mm -hmm. She's been working with me for, oh, probably five years that way. Okay. She, and she's, then, she's a self, self-selected client then? She wasn't like, we're, exactly. You know, okay. Interesting. interesting. Yes, exactly. And, um, yeah, she found me and. She's just never stopped. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, me too. What yeah. sort of, um, I mean, are you, are you coaching? So these, 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 these private clients that are self-selected versus, you know, maybe a corporate client where, you know, maybe someone in, 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 in the C-suite sees that, you know, a, a director needs some help with, with their area. Um, for this, a self-selected private client, what sorts of things are they coming to you for specifically? Wow, it's all over the map, partly because the people that 
come to me are all over the map. I mean, uh -huh. people, first off, globally, because you know podcasts are have no sure. boundaries. Yeah. Um, people who are like that woman at Amazon, mm -hmm. she's already a senior leader, right? Uh, I have um, an assistant to a pastor of a small church in Texas. Mm -hmm. And she wanted some help because she was feeling timid and mm -hmm. she wanted to speak up. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, that's great. You know, I love helping that woman and having conversations with her. And she's terrific. People come either I find, but with two things, one is they want a style thing. Like I'd like to have a bigger voice. I'm having trouble holding my own in a meeting kind of thing. Uh -huh. That's a style thing. Uh -huh. Or they have um, a career thing. Mm -hmm. that they want to change. I want to get promoted or I'm having trouble managing my boss or something like that. Those mm -hmm. are the two kind of big categories that people reach out to me about through the podcast. Interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. What, uh, what, where do you get the, the, these private clients? How are they finding you? How are you marketing your services these days? Oh, it's, I think it's 99% through the podcast every now and then I just had someone come to me by the way, I love this story. I volunteer with a group called uh, Women's Impact Alliance. I've been coaching for them for yep. I have years and years and years. I coached a young woman who was in Vietnam at the time. Uh, she's an American national working in Vietnam. You know, and I'm donating my time to her. Mm -hmm. She's a volunteer. I'm volunteering for her, and we really had a great connection. Made a big difference for her. Years later, her husband, who's now an executive in Colorado reached out to me. He said, you know, Hey, my wife always talks so highly about you. I'd love your help. And I'm like, that's pretty rare. Right. I mean, that is not the norm, but it was so, it was a great story. And so it was sweet, but yeah. in general, in general, Michael, I mean, it, I never expected this. I never expected to get work through my podcast. Uh -huh. um, my podcast kind of came to life for a different reason. Uh, but it certainly has become the feeder for that part of my business. Yeah. Yeah. You were saying you started the podcast back in 2008, just kind of for fun and, 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 you, and you're doing it just once a month. Yeah. Because I have another job, <laughs> I have a full time <laughs> job. So getting, getting my show up, uh, once a month, that's part of my work month, but uh -huh. it takes a month. Yeah. 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 Cool. Cool. When, when did, um, what was the, when was the tipping point where, where you really started to see work coming in through from specifically from the podcast? Ooh, I would say that that started really late, like maybe 2018 or so where yeah. it felt like not just random one-offs, you yeah. know, I've always kind of had random one-offs, but where suddenly there was like, Oh, this looks like a trend. Like I'm yeah. gonna have to make room on my calendar for this. Yeah. I think it would say 2018, but then really when the pandemic hit, man, oh man, that it just exploded. It really mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a decade in, that's 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 commitment. Yeah. <laughs> well, and also, by the way, you know, I've never because the podcast doesn't exist. I don't think of the podcast as a feeder. That's not my thought about it. Mm -hmm. I've never gone on the air and asked for work. Sure. Sure. You know, I've never. You know, so uh, the fact that it took uh, 10 years, it's like, I, I felt like I earned it. It was yeah. okay with me. It was fine. Yeah. No, that's great. And in fact, <clears throat> I'll, I'll use this opportunity uh, to uh, to pitch uh, another podcast that I host called The Authority's Edge with Strategic Advisor Board. Um, and that is a podcast where I talk very specifically about how authority and trust give businesses leverage it gives businesses an edge um in in business because it's it's this it's this new style of content marketing where you're not really marketing right you're you're creating content and that content is delivering value and that's building this trust it's building authority and when someone is ready to work with you there's no sales process anymore it's just good timing and they come to you and they say hey like, like you just said, right? I need, I need your help. I've, I, I, I've heard your podcast. I know who you are. I trust you. I believe that, that you know what you're talking about. I think you can help me. Let's go. Yes. Boy, first of that podcast of yours sounds fantastic and I'm really interested and I will find it. Yeah. Um, and I thought it, I, of exactly what you said. I thought of that just the other day. I had a 
call with a guy who reached out to me through the podcast, hey, I'd like to talk to you about coaching. And I could tell literally in the first 30 seconds that we started our Zoom call to uh -huh. talk about what we might talk about during coaching, uh -huh. I could tell he was sold. Yeah. yeah. He was all in. I didn't yeah. have to do anything. And I and that's a really my goodness, it's such a luxury to start there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it I takes feel really 10, lucky. But it, but it takes 10 years, right? <laughs> well, it takes whatever it takes to build the trust. Sure. Right? Yeah. yeah. But in but in the end, I, I believe it's a it's a it's it's a great way. It's I believe it's the best way for coaches and consultants to do marketing. Because it's such coaching and consulting, it's coaching specifically, we'll stick with coaching. It's such a personal uh, thing, right? It's, it's very subjective. There's, there's, there's tr a lot of trust involved between a coach and a coachee and you have to trust the other person and there has to be some, some chemistry there. I, I love audio. I have always loved audio. If I have a choice between listening to music or listening to spoken word, I'll listen to spoken word. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, so I'm into language and hearing people and I love wearing headsets and I love having someone's voice in my ear. Uh -huh. I really do. So I am aware a lot of the times when I coach someone that I don't know, like when I get a corporate gig and we just met each other and we're getting started, I'm aware that I, in my head, have something that I think about as earning the right to coach you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's four or five sessions before I feel like I've earned the right because mm -hmm. building trust is slippery, right? Mm -hmm. With people who listen to the podcast, I've been in their ears in such an intimate way. They think they know me. Yeah, 100%. And, and they're calling because they do trust me. And I think like, oh my gosh, exactly what you said. Like, I I'm so grateful for having been in their ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's a great way to market. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, especially for those who are bad at sales <laughs> because it bypasses the sales process. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose that's true. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what does a typical engagement with you look like these days? Has that, has that changed at all? No, on the corporate side, no. So you know what the private side looks like. So the coaching side usually starts with the 360, usually starts with me talking to the boss. Mm -hmm. Then the boss, the person I'm coaching, and I will all talk. And this is all in the interest of goal setting. Mm -hmm. So as a corporate coach, to me, the biggest way that I can screw up an engagement is mm -hmm. to not have clear goals. Mm -hmm. I don't have clear goals. The coaching's not going to go well. It's just not... Because it's corporate, there's pressure on people are watching. Yeah. So anyway, 360 meeting with the boss, alignment meeting with the three of us, and then basically 12 sessions, mm -hmm. which are anywhere from 90 minutes to three hours to whatever. I don't know. Depends yeah. on what what's needed. And uh, then we meet with the boss on the way out, mm -hmm. and that's it. Pretty straightforward engagement. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Yeah, right. hasn't changed that much. Although, as I said to someone recently. I have done this so many different ways. I mean, I could slice and dice this a lot of different ways for you if you wanted, you know, we can make things more, you know, easier, simpler, harder, more complex, deeper, whatever. But yeah, that's the basic structure. And I don't find that I'm outside the norm with my colleagues. Most yeah. of my colleagues are doing something pretty similar to that. Yeah. Don't you sounds, find it? It sounds, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, 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 there's, you know, what are they, what's the a silly, uh, phrase there's a, a hundred ways to skin a cat <laughs> no but yes i agree yeah right you know there's there's different i think there's different tactics uh, and different roads that you can take to to get somewhere but ultimately a lot of you know leadership coaching executive coaching that sort of thing is is pretty much going to be heading down the same or heading to the same destination it's just depending on which road you take to get there i think that's the analogy i'm looking for maybe you know i subcontract with colleagues of mine who run their own coaching companies and um and they all have different prescriptions for how they like their coaching done right. they want the 360 done at this time instead of that time and so there's you know a million variations and it's all still good corporate coaching right yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've uh, you've mentioned the goals a few times um since we've been talking today what is your you know, what's, what's your strategy? What's your, your, well, maybe not strategy. What's your, what's your 
tactics there? How do you how do you construct goals for your clients? Do you have a specific method that you use? Well, I have a specific question I ask. And so I will ask this of the boss, maybe the HR person, certainly the person I'm coaching. Mm -hmm. And the question is like, if I'm coaching you, Michael, mm -hmm. I would say, so Michael, if the coaching were a fantastic success, what would be different? Mm -hmm. And that's the conversation now where out of whatever you say, whether you're the boss or the person, that's the conversation that's going to get us starting to listen for goals. What are we trying to make different? Yeah. You know, she would get more of her ideas up to the senior level. Okay. Okay. So there's all kinds of stuff in that, right? Influence and presence and right. So that's my kind of method for finding goals is starting with that question. I like that. That's, it's, it's, Important. I mean, you're essentially saying, you know, what result do you want out of this? But your phrasing of that question, um, I think that's super important. The way you're framing the question in, in such a way that it becomes easy to answer, right? A question, a question like a question like, "What result do you want?" is not a good way to phrase that <laughs> that question. I also find it's an evocative question. It's not an. It's not a question people are anticipating. Uh -huh, so when right. I say what would be different, they often actually think they actually reflect yeah. and i go that's a good question and by the way i've been refining that question for a long time it took me a long i didn't you know it's, yeah that 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 word question forces you right to reflect a little bit because at that point you're thinking about a comparison what would be different right so you got to think about what things are like right now or what they've been like in the past and what's what's going to change that's a really good point because many times people talk about the irritant uh-huh Okay. Yeah. Right. You know, she just, she's not cooperative. Uh -huh. um, she doesn't know when to pass the ball in a meeting, right? They start with the irritant, uh -huh. which uh -huh. is not necessarily what the goal is going to be, but it's good to know what the irritant is. Uh huh. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Cause I, that, that, that makes a lot of sense as well, because oftentimes people will, um, well, oftentimes, uh, I, I, I think a coaching, uh, engagement will begin because of some irritant, whether that's a person or a, a process or, you know, a, a specific part of an organization that's not working out. Um, that would be maybe the catalyst, right, for, for starting a new coaching engagement, but that's not necessarily... I mean, you, I guess you could start a conversation about goals there, but it's not the goal itself, right? To just remove the irritant. That's not all that you want to do. Oh, right. Yes. Let's hope not. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I find, again, when I started coaching a long time ago, we were almost always asked to save someone who was about to fall off a cliff. Uh -huh. We were like, if, if you guys can't fix him, he's going to get fired. Uh -huh. Right. And so it was this sense of repair work and, you know, people in jeopardy. And we worked really hard to go, that's actually not what we're job, our job is. Yeah. Now that I find it's an easy sell, this idea that the goals are there because we're trying to help you succeed. Mm -hmm. You're not being sent to coaching because you're failing. Mm -hmm. you're, you're being, you know, so the, often the idea of what would be different and that idea of helping someone succeed, the goals usually are pretty easy, usually. Sure pretty easy yeah and by yeah, easy i just want to say easy to define not necessarily easy to achieve right right sorry to interrupt no no no, not at all um i, I was just going to say i think that that makes a lot of sense because you want you know as a, as a coach you want to help your clients you don't want to just remove the irritant you want to help your clients actually level up right if, if all you're doing is removing the irritant it's almost like, you know, maybe like a smart aunt could, could do that. <laughs> like you don't, you don't need to hire, you don't need to hire me to just, to just remove the irritant. Like, you know, talk to your smart uncle and ask him like, <laughs> I'm here to, I'm here to help you rise. Yes. Often. Uh, not everybody wants a promotion, but yes, often, if nothing else, work's going to get better for everyone. Yeah. And I, and I didn't mean rise to say promotion specifically, but I mean like rise as in rise to the challenge, be your best self, right? That, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, which again is why just in my experience, when people were quote unquote sent for coaching, mm -hmm. 
to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't sound very encouraging to help that person be their best self, right? I mean, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's really like, oh, you're a problem and we're going to make you tolerable. Mm -hmm. um, Not very inspiring. I'm, no, and people can feel it. But by the way, those people exist. I mean, look, one of the things that I'm known for is dealing with, quote unquote, disruptive executives. Those people exist. Yeah. Where, look, if we could just get rid of the irritant, it would be really helpful because mm -hmm. it can be really irritating. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, there are people in the workplace who are really irritating. It's changed, by the way, because of Zoom. Mm -hmm. And people aren't around each other so many hours of every day. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but sometimes the irritant is just softened just because it's remote. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um Gosh, yeah, Tom. What I mean, what else is what else is new in your world since we since we last spoke? It's been I mean, the, your pod, your first podcast was released uh, in December of 2021, but I think it's been about a year and a half since we actually last spoke. Oh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So what's different for me, and I'm going to guess that everybody has their own story about this, but what's different for me with my clients is talking about return to work. Okay. Return to like physical location? whatever it's going to look like that yeah. there's so i'll give you two different examples uh because everybody's all over the map on this right i mean everybody is you know globally but certainly my clients are no different they're all over the map mm -hmm. so i was working with uh, a president of an international bank he runs the u.s division and he said i come into the office every day i think everybody should be coming into the office every day everybody's going to be coming into the office every day and i thought this is going to go badly. Mm -hmm. This is not going to go over well. <laughs> and uh, and I was like, huh, he's he's not asking for my coaching here, but we we did have a conversation about it. No. And there is no right answer. I think he's I think he's going to have a hard sell with his position. Yeah. But the point is everybody's talking about it. Mm -hmm. Um I had an Yeah. So anyway, the remote to work thing I know it's changing everything, hiring, retention, but also it's changing teams. Mm -hmm. I mean, teams do not function the way they did three years ago. They just do not. Yeah. And and we can debate about whether that's good or bad, but but they're just not the same. It's different. Yeah. 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 I've read some I've read some literature specifically so for me obviously as a as as uh, the owner of of boxer agency we're a, a creative media marketing company um and I've, i have read some literature specifically on creative teams um that that says that it's not creative teams tend to function better in person because there's an energy i can imagine yeah yeah oh for sure yeah Listen, I think that's true for, yes, creatives, because things go very quickly, but just in general. Mm -hmm. I, I want to tell you, the, the times that I have been back in big rooms with groups of people, I am I feel like celebrating. I'm like <laughs> thrilled. I mean, I'm going to work tomorrow to, with a group of 12. You know, it's like this, you know, team that's coming together, and I'm glad to be in the room with them. But to be in the room of, you know, 120 people or 250 people, it's thrilling to mm -hmm. be back and mm -hmm. to get a group kind of moving together, thinking together, doing, having the experience together. Sure. It's just so energizing. And I will confess, I have missed it. Yeah. I really have. Yeah. 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 I think I have as well. It's, it's, um, I don't know. It's hard to, hard to pin down, hard to put into words. Yeah. But it's definitely, there's definitely something something in in the creative process at least I think that is missing when your primary you know mode of communication is either a chat or a zoom call yeah there's just there's not it's not as i don't know spontaneous I agree, but listen, one of the challenges with Zoom is that Zoom doesn't like it when we talk at the same time uh-huh right? 
And and part of having a really healthy creative meeting is everybody's going to be talking at the same time. Yeah, and that's right, great, right? right? right. Yeah, I but heard. that's the energy. That's how people yeah. get to places in their thinking. So yeah, Zoom is not friendly to support that. Not 100%. at all. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things, thinking about what have I learned, right, during this time, one of the things that I've learned is a really simple trick that has created such... Um, productive results i'd love to share it with you please i'm i'm all ears we're all this ears. Is, this is really simple it is to ask the question ask a question of a group on zoom and people are going to write their answer they might write it in the chat or they might write it on a piece of paper whatever uh -huh. but everybody stays on mute for 60 seconds uh-huh 60 seconds just 60 seconds and if the th if the question is one where people actually need to reflect, everybody kind of starts from the same place. Mm -hmm. Whereas what I have what I have found, if you just ask the question, one of the extroverts will go first, <laughs> and then another extrovert will chime in, and the introverts will never speak. Mm -hmm. They're just not. They were never ready. And mm -hmm. either they're going to stick with their own thoughts and not listen, or they're going to listen and not stick with their own thoughts, but it's an unsatisfying experience for them and they'd end up not participating. Mm -hmm. And so you end up not hearing so many voices. This 60 seconds is a fantastic equalizer. I like that. That's great. And, and people can use the 60 seconds however they want, but a lot of people, if the especially if the question is meaty, mm -hmm. people, when you come back after 60 seconds, they're like, wait, 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 no, no. It's great. It gets people thinking. It's nice. Mm -hmm. It's helpful. That's great. That's brilliant. I'm I'm definitely going to try that out. What I've what I've been doing, you know, and and I've got a, a relatively small team. Um, you know, there's there's half a dozen of us, so it's it's not like I've got a, a gigantic Zoom room full of people. But I will um, <clears throat> ask a question, and then I'll, I'll I'll pick someone to to talk first, and that way, you know, everybody gets kind of a chance to to have the opportunity to not be drowned out by the extroverts on the team. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, and you know, these people too. So you, I can yep. imagine you have some scorecard in your head of how everybody's doing. Yeah. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Nice. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a good, I like that. And, and then being on mute for 60 seconds specifically, I like that. Cause that, you know, you don't feel like you're behind the eight ball stressing out like you've got a little bit of time to to think about it and and kind of collect yourself and and yes. come up with with the answer to whatever the question may be yeah so listen i pulled i pulled that from an exercise from liberating structures has anybody talked to you about liberating structures nope haven't heard of it oh my god okay so there are going to be certain people in your audience who are going to be screaming and cheering because people who know liberating structures are like converts, uh -huh. you know? So uh, liberating structures is a free website that is intended to help normal people, just every average, average everyday person lead experiences with groups. Okay. And they are so great and simple and get profound results and one of them is something called one, two, four, all. And it starts with one minute of silent writing uh -huh. and how transformative that one minute of silent writing is. And huh. I, I learned it in rooms facilitating and seeing what it did to the group. It was incredible. And then I brought it to the online world and it worked just as well. Huh. Cool. So, so liberating structures, man, if you don't know it, uh, it completely changed me as a facilitator. I mean, I cannot begin to tell you how it changed me as a facilitator. It's great. I love it. I love it. I'll I'll find uh, I'll find that website for those listening. Um, we'll we'll definitely add that to the show notes. Um, oh yeah, that sounds super cool. It is and fun. I mean, they are fun things to do. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So, if you want to lead a group, nice. I have um, a book. A book I bought. I don't know five, six, seven years ago called Game Storming. Are you familiar? Have you heard of this one? No. So they're there. This is another one for facilitating brainstorming sessions in, in, in groups. Um, right. and it, and it's just a book. I don't know if I've got it right here. It might be in the other room. I think it's in the other room. Um, I'm looking up my bookshelf. Um, 
But it's essentially, yeah, it's just a book of, of, of games, right? That, that, that help people brainstorm icebreakers, all, all of it. Yeah. It's helpful, right? I mean, yeah. So great. I'm, I'm glad. Listen, I feel very lucky that my, one of the things that grew out of my corporate business was this facilitation thing. Mm -hmm. I I've learned so much and, and I've loved it and it's been really meaningful to me. And I'm aware that not every coach that I know, every, every executive coach facilitates, not everyone does yeah. for, for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, so I've just enjoyed the hell out of it and it's taught me a ton, mm -hmm. you know, facilitating a team. It's just really a fantastic experience. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Tom, um, gosh, is there, uh, I want to be respectful of your time here. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about that we haven't had an opportunity to touch upon yet? Well, I'd love to extend an invitation if I may. Ooh, plot thickens. Yeah. I'm, I'm listening. So, uh, <laughs> I am, I live in Los Angeles. Yeah. I'm part of the ICF chapter here in Los Angeles and the ICF chapter has what they call special interest groups. And I lead one on executive coaching six times a year. Great. And they are fun community. Uh, everybody comes as a learner. We have specific topics that we address. It's just, and there are people from all over the world who join. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. So I would love to invite executive coaches that are listening to the show or people who are interested come and join it and I'll send you a link. Awesome. Fantastic. Is, is do you are you going to is there a specific place where people can go and get it or do you want to send me a link and I can put it on the show notes page? Oh, so it, if people are interested, it is on the ICF Los Angeles website okay. under events. Just look under special interest groups and you'll find it. Well, ICF LA, if people need to keep up their credentials, ICF LA offers so many things of which this is one. So Nice. Yeah, it's a great website, ICF LA. Fantastic. Awesome. So yeah, so for those listening, um, we will definitely uh, grab that link. Uh, I'll look at the website or I'll grab it from you, Tom, and we'll add that to the show notes. Um, and that's, yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Um, Tom, where can our listeners and viewers connect with you online? Well, one is the podcast, which is The Look and Sound of Leadership. Awesome. And the other is our website where we just have lots and lots of free tools for people. Um, it's the Essential Communications website, which is EssentialCom with two M's dot com. Awesome. And we will include those links uh, on our show notes page as well. Thank uh, you. Fantastic, Tom. I mean, I think I think that's everything, bud. <laughs> Listen, I'm so glad to talk to you again. Thank you for having me back. Yeah, and thank you so much for taking the time to join me. And thank you, of course, our listeners and viewers. You guys are fantastic. And uh, that's it. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.